May God bless you and welcome to our weekly message. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you for everything you've done for us. We thank you, Lord, for the message you're about to give us. We ask, Lord, that it will be your words and no one else's. Father, we just pray it will go forth and touch every soul you'd have to touch for your glory. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Let us go to Ezekiel 33. Let's go to verse number 1. Again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coasts, and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. We live in a day when the word of God has gone forth to so many. There have been so many watchmen through the years appointed. So many watchmen trying to say, hey, turn from your sin, turn from the mess. Turn from this worldly way. Turn to God. Put God first. It's time to put Him first. It's time to seek after Him. It's time to be His people. And He'll be your God. We live in a day when so many have gone forth saying those things. And wherever you're at today, if you've never heard any of that, and you're listening today, then praise God because today a watchman is telling you, hey, it's time to turn to Jesus. It's time because the storm is coming. The sword that God speaks of is coming. All that stuff is coming. I don't know when. I don't know where. I don't know how. But I know it's coming. I know it because my Bible doesn't get any better truly till the end. Till Jesus comes and fixes everything. Till the new heavens and the new earth. Till God deals with everything. Till he sends the devil and all that followed him into the lake of fire. But my Bible truly reads that there's a lot of rough days ahead. And I truly believe that. And I truly believe today that watchmen need to be out there saying, hey, it's time to turn to God. It's time to get right. Tomorrow is not promised to you. It's not promised to me. God is no respecter of persons just because I preach the gospel and try to do what he'd have me to do. I'm not any better off than you. Truly, I can suffer whatever. It rains on the just. It rains on the unjust. Being ready is what we're told to do. Being prepared, taking heed to the voice of the watchman. Because it's truly sounding out in this day, in this hour. You say, preacher, what must I do? What can I do? It's time to be saved. It's time to give Jesus who you are. Time to ask Him to be your Lord and Savior, to follow after Him. And if you've done this and you just kind of live whatever kind of way and you're doing this and that, it's time to get close to Him again. It's time to come to Him with all that you are. Make Him the focus of your life. Put Him first. There's no better time. The children of Israel in that day, they all knew God. They all knew God was up there. They all probably went through the motions of the temple and all the things that they had done. And yet they let all these other things in. They let all these idols in. They let all this iniquity come into their life. And they began to separate them from Almighty God. God wants a people that are after Him. He is a jealous God. He wants to be first. Considering He gives us the breath that we breathe, the food that we eat, the, the sunshine that keeps our world alive. Everything that He gives us, considering He does all that, surely, surely we can put Him first. Surely we can make Him Lord of our life. He wants first place because He's earned it. Just as you, if you've got children, you want them to love you. You want them to appreciate who you are. You want them to listen to what you tell them. You don't tell them things because you're trying to hurt them. You don't tell them things because you're out to make their life miserable. You don't tell them things 
to disrupt any kind of good thing in their life. You tell them things to make their life better, to give them a more abundant life that you can give them on this earth. You tell them and teach them the things that you know are good, that you know helped you. You tell them because you've been there and you've done that. God Almighty does the same thing for you. God Almighty is a parent that has never, ever done anything wrong. He's never had child services called on him because he's Almighty God. He's perfect in all his ways. He's not a deadbeat dad. He's never abandoned his children, even when it feels like he's abandoned you, even when it feels like he's not there, even when it feels like you're in the darkest of places, in the worst of spots. God is still there. Even from the belly of the whale, Jonah cried unto him and he heard him. Even in the worst of the Babylonian captivity, during the book of Lamentations, people called out to God and God was still listening. Nehemiah, as he knelt down in one of the worst periods when the wall wasn't even built around Jerusalem, he prayed and sought his God and God let him go and do something in that day. God is always there. Daddy, God is always there for you, for me. We are his children. Think of your children today if you've got them. If you've got little nieces and nephews, think how much you love them. Think of your parents, how they loved you. And I know not all parents did as they should do. And if they didn't, I tell you today, we've got a God that will. We've got a God that can fill that place where mom or dad may have fallen short, where mom or dad may have been abusive or crazy or whatever different things that some parents have been in this world. Our God is still up there. He can still fix all that too. He can still help you. No matter what it was that you've gone through, God always watched it. God always knew. Stage 4 cancer, whatever it is, God is right there. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. But all things, if given to Him, if put in His hands, will work for His perfect glory and His perfect way. All things will work out just as He wants them to. And just for a good way, for a lot into somebody else. And just as a woman, as she gives birth, she's in all that pain, all that turmoil. And then here comes that beautiful little baby. And everything's all right when she sees that baby. She doesn't remember all that labor. You know, it doesn't even matter the pain that she went through to get it because she's got it. And she gets that little baby in her arms and it's such a beautiful thing. I've watched it. You know, it's a struggle and then baby comes it's like oh man praise God my baby you know such a beautiful thing that's what this world and the struggles we go through is compared to because heaven no matter what pain you've endured no matter what struggle no matter what illness has come upon you no matter what is going on right now today with your life heaven when you get there it's all going to be forgotten it's all going to be better those martyrs of God that were burned alive, that were crucified, that were put to death at the stake, whatever kind of way they died. And then they opened their eyes in heaven. Stephen, as they stoned him to death, and he looks up and he sees Christ on the right hand of the Father. And even as he's being stoned to death for doing nothing but the right thing, for trying to preach to people that needed to hear the word of God, he looks up and he gets peace. He says, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. But I tell you today, God wants nothing for you but good things. No matter what you're going through, no matter what's come upon you. God is not the bad guy. He's never the bad guy. He's a parent that loves you and he'll be with you through all of it. It rains on the just and the unjust alike. Amen. But God loves all of us. God has a plan for all of us. No matter what it is, we get up there it's all going to be okay you see Paul who went forth and persecuted the church of God done all the things that he did and then he turned to God Jesus came to him and he had no choice pretty much I mean he knew what he'd done Paul is so humble and he feels so guilty the rest of the Bible that you read about it with so much stuff he wrote because he knew that he had done what he had done and he went through so many things and yet he got to heaven. It was all all right. You and me are in the world today. And the watchmen are calling all over. The trumpets are blowing all over. Get ready. It's coming. The storm is coming. Change is coming. 
the wicked ones out, seeking whom he may devour. There's all manner of things going on in the world today. All manner of things going on in the world today. All hell, seemingly, is coming against the souls of mankind, trying to turn them to whom he may turn them. Because they don't want, in hell, those demons and the devil, they don't want us serving God. They don't want us getting to heaven. They know they'll never get there, and they sure don't want you there. They want you down there with them in the misery and the pain, and they've got all these bright, shiny, pretty things to keep our eyes off the watchman, to keep our ears from the trumpet, and to keep us focusing on a world that is just as dead as 4 o'clock when it all comes and hits the fan. And yet it looks so bright and vibrant and alive right now. Just as the serpent in the garden told Eve, you surely won't die. If you eat this fruit, you'll be just like him. And she ate that fruit. And Adam ate that fruit. And their bodies began to die. Their bodies became just like everybody else's is now. They became regular people. Knowing good and knowing evil and then having to deal with both. Sin entered in because they disobeyed the word of God. They had one thing they had to do. One thing. They couldn't even get that right. Don't feel guilty about messing up when you've got so many. Because one thing they couldn't even get right in the garden. My wife and I were talking with our daughters last night. We had a little Bible study at home. It was a blessing. And they were saying, what would y'all have done in the Garden of Eden? And we told them, we probably would have done the same thing because mankind is just how we seem to be. But no matter how far or how silly we get, the watchmen are still calling today. There's still breath in our bodies. There's still a chance to turn everything over to Jesus Christ. No matter where your life is, it may not be where you think it should be. Mine isn't. So many areas. But the one thing I know I have gotten right is I came to Him. And if all else fails, when all else is gone, if I'll stay with Him, following and serving Him, it'll be alright. This world's got a few things to offer. There's things we can have. We can have some heart's desires and all that. But truly, when our heart's desire is to see people saved for God, when our heart's desire is to see people touched by Jesus Christ, to see people delivered from hell's flames, that's when our will and God's will kind of line up. That's what I want today. Adam and Eve ate the fruit. Their bodies began to die. The only true life, the only true vine, is Christ. He said, I'm the vine, you're the branches, you that live in me. If we'll live in him, that's where life comes from. It's the only true life in this world is to be hooked up to him, to be part of him, to be part of his kingdom, to let him, in, to let him abide in us and us in him. The world that we live in, you read of all manner of atrocities going on right now. Wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places just like Jesus said it was going to be. You think to yourself, what a crazy time to live in. What a turbulent time. All kinds of immorality being celebrated. You think, wow. And just as we talked of earlier that it almost seems like God isn't even there sometimes. It seems like he's so far away. But I tell you, God is letting all these things go. Just as the Bible says they will, because the Bible tells it clearly. The Bible tells clearly all these things will come to pass. But fear not, because he's there. The watchmen are still calling out. Will you come to Christ? Will you come before it's too late? Will you take heed? The warnings are all there. All the signs are there. They're all there. If you read this Bible, if you read truly, read Matthew 24, read some Revelations, read 2 Timothy, read so many of the places, and you see all the things that it speaks of. Romans 1, you see so many different things coming to pass right now in our day. So many things. And the watchmen are there. They're trying to warn you. As a minister of the Lord, it's my job to bring the message to you. It's my job to tell you about Christ. It's my job to tell you what you need to do. If I've done that, the blood for you is off my hands. 
and it's into your own. You, you take the responsibility. If you know the truth, then it's your responsibility to do something with it. And I say that to you today, encouraging you, that you know what it is that you need to do. You know where you stand with God. You know that without Jesus Christ, there's no hope. There's no future. You know that living in the sin and the mess that you might have slipped into if you're living in it right now, that there's no hope and no future in that. You know that living for this world is a temporary thing because this world is going to pass away. And all the things therein, one stone won't stand upon another. Just as 2 Peter 3 last week said, seeing that the world and all these things will be burned up, what manner of persons ought we to be? And I ask you today, what manner of person should you be? Knowing that it's all coming. Knowing that things are going on right now, some awful things. And you say, preacher, I'm not good enough to come and be saved right now. I don't have what I need. I'm not doing what I need to come and be God's. I'm going to serve God, but not today. I'm not cleaned up this area of my life or that area of my life or whatever. I'm not ready yet, preacher, to do what God's got for me to do. But the boy that came with the fish and the bread, did he have enough to feed 5,000 people, 5,000 men, and then the women and children with him? Who knows how many people at all? Did he have enough food to feed all of them? No. What did that little boy do? He handed those to Jesus. Jesus took those. And when Jesus got into that, everybody was fed and there was leftovers. When Jesus got into it, you are not holy enough. I'm not holy enough. There's nothing perfect about me. There's nothing good about me without Christ inside of me, without letting him in here, without letting him do what he'll do. There's nothing good enough in me. Travis Williams is just a man. Just like you, I'm just a person. I'll give everything to Him and let Him come in here. That's when things change. That's when things begin to get right. You can't change yourself. You can't fix yourself. You can't get yourself into heaven without Jesus Christ. I can't either. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by Him. You say, preacher, I'm not good enough. Preacher, I'm not able to do this today. I challenge you. Let Jesus come. Come just as you are and let him begin to do what he does. He didn't call me to go catch a bunch of clean, perfect, spotless fish. He called me to catch whoever fish I could catch, whatever fish I could catch. He called me to get whosoever would to come. The watchman doesn't care who he's talking to. He doesn't care if the people know about everything. He wants to tell them. And then when they get the message, then they do with the message what they are to do. A true watchman that's trying for the safety of whoever, he doesn't even care who he's warning. He doesn't look at the condition of that person. He just wants that person to be safe. That's what the watchman's job is, to give the message to everybody. I don't look for you to be in perfect condition because I'm not in perfect condition. I don't look for you to be holy and pure. Are any of us human beings, our righteousness is in filthy rags before the Lord. So if you say, preacher, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready at this point in my life to serve God. I'm not where I need to be. Then friend, come to him and let him get you where you need to be. I don't want you to perish in hellfire for eternity. I don't. I don't know you. I don't need to know you. Not to know that. I know I love you because God loves you. Because Jesus loved you enough to die for you. So I know you're pretty special no matter who you are, no matter how you feel today, no matter how small and insignificant you feel your life is. I tell you today, your life can mean a lot to a lot of people. There's a man named Joe Kane that I speak of often in the 5 Minutes with God video series. Joe Kane came into this grocery store I used to work in. I was 16 years old. And Joe would always say one thing. He'd say, how you doing, Joe? He's an older man, probably 60s, 70s, I don't know. Joe would always say, God's been good to me, buddy. No matter what it is. And he'd say, I love you, buddy. He'd tell you that. And you know, at that age, it was kind of like, well, okay. But you know what? When Joe said it, I believed it. Because Joe did. 
Jonas had that in his heart. You could just see it in that man that he had love in him. That Christ came and did something in Joe. I don't know what Joe was in his past. I don't know how Joe Cain lived. I don't know anything about Joe Cain other than I saw Christ in Joe Cain. And I loved that man just like he said he loved me because I knew he was real. I felt it in my spirit that he was real. You may think there's nothing at all you can do for God. But I tell you what, without Joe Cain, I don't know if I'd be preaching today. Without Joe Cain, I don't know if I would have thought, well, Lord, I need to come follow you. Each and every person is essential to whatever we do for God. God uses all the pieces. And there's so many people like that over the years I can think of, but that one stands out. And I challenge you today, just as you are, won't you come to him today? Won't you listen to the watchman today? The message is, the sword is coming. The end is coming. Death will imminently come for you, for me, for all of us. Be ready. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Come to me, Jesus said. All you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. No matter what sin you're carrying today, no matter what stuff you're involved in, wrapped up in, Come to him. He can deliver. Just as he delivered Daniel from the lion's den. A seemingly impossible thing. Those lions in all manner of regular life would have tore Daniel to shreds. That would have been the end of Daniel. And yet God closed their mouths up. The same God that delivered him, that delivered those three Hebrew boys from the fire in Daniel 3. That delivered Jonah from the well. To be a watchman in Nineveh for him, even though Jonah didn't want to go, he still delivered him and let him go forth. God wants you today not to perish, not to die as you are, but to come unto him as you are and let him clean you up. Let him fix the things. Let him make the crooked ways straight. Let him be right here. Let him begin to show you the purpose of your life hearing the watchman right now, one of them, and there's many other watchmen out there speaking. doesn't matter which one you listen to. It matters if you take heed or not. If you've heard me today, then I've done my job. I've delivered the message. But I pray you'll receive it. I'll continue to plead with you as long as you'll allow me, as long as you'll click on the little link and let me plead on you. Plead with you, I will plead for you to be saved. But I pray that today would be the day for you. If you will today, you don't have to be lost. If you will today, if you've, if you've ran from him and you feel like I'm not living like I need to be living, won't you say this prayer too? But if you've never gave him your life, say it also. Recommit your life. Give your life to him. Whatever you need to do today, today is the day of salvation. If you don't know Jesus today as your Lord and Savior, won't you pray with me? Make him your Lord and Savior today. And then go forth. Get in this word. Find you a Bible believing church or come listen to the word here wherever you can get fed. But seek after him and grow in him and become, a, become what he'd have you to be. Let him make you what you can be. Because he can. Just as he used those fish and that bread to feed all those people. That's what he was given. And that's what he used. You come to him and he'll use exactly who you are to do exactly what he'll do. He can do it. Our God made everybody. He's not willing that any of his children should perish, but that all would come to repentance. Won't you pray today and ask Jesus to be your Savior? Tomorrow might not come for you. Might not come for me. May not even have ten minutes from now. We might hear the main trumpet, the big trumpet blow. It'll be time for all of us. Come to him just as you are today. Won't you pray with me? Pray this prayer. Give Jesus your life today, if you will. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Lord, I ask you to come into my life and take over. I want Jesus Christ to be Lord of my life. In Jesus' holy name we pray, and I pray. Amen. Put him first today, like never before. He loves you. 
Oh, He loves you. Just like you love your children. Just like I love my children. Just like your parents loved you. Or somebody loved you. If your parents didn't do as they should. If they did, then that enemy's busy. But God is His Father of all, and He loves you. More than anybody. More than anybody ever could. He's there for you to call on any time. If you've prayed that prayer, you signed up to follow Christ. Now seek after Him. Pray about those things that keep you from Him. Put Him first in every way. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. Put Him first today. It's time. Everybody else, God bless you. Please. Continue to pray for this ministry. Share these messages if they're blessing you, if you feel led to. Let the watchman's word go forth and all those other watchmen, whoever you feel is the watchman that'll, that'll help somebody get saved. Because it's sure not a contest. It's sure not a Travis Williams show or whatever other preacher show. It's about God. It's about his word going forth. That's what we want. We just want people to be ready. We don't want people lost to hell. There's a lot of preachers I like to listen to. A lot of good ones out there that they really bring a, a, mighty, a mighty amazing message. Please be in prayer for them as well. That the Lord will continue to use them. And pray for me. I definitely need it. Let us all pray close. Dear Lord, we just thank you for everything you've done for us. We thank you for this word, Lord. We pray, Father, for every soul that hears it, Lord. That it might go to souls, Father, that would surrender. Lord, we just lift them up. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. I encourage you also, if, if you were led to give your life to Jesus in this message, feel free to let me know. Put it in the comments section of this video or just somewhere on Facebook. My name is Travis Williams. You can go to the 5 Minutes with God video page somewhere. Message me or something and let me know if you would, if you feel led to. It's not a must. You don't have to, but It'd just be neat to know that this message touched you and that I can be praying for you and maybe help you wherever wherever the Lord would let me. But I just thank you for watching this and I pray it has touched you. And I love y'all. May God bless you.